गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीबॉडी बिफोर आई स्टार्ट माय टॉक आई हैव टू से द वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट कोट ऑफ अहमद दाऊद ओगलू हु वाज फॉर्मर प्राइम मिनिस्टर ऑफ टर्की ही सेड दैट पीस एंड फ्रीडम कम्स अलोंग without freedom there is no peace without peace there is no freedom for the last 76 years palestinian people have been suffering this destruction disposition displacement cruelty enmity from the state of israel the last records when we look at the newspaper when they attack gaza and in east jerusalem and west bank too they they have blocked the deliveries of food water fuel and electricity and even they told the people to which so to uh, move from the northern part of uh, gaza to the southern part and so far they have killed about 8000 palestinians both from gaza and west bank and even from masulaq sa east to jerusalem we know that gaza is 2002 million to 1/2 million people who live there world population they unanimously say that you are gaza is open air prison and still israel they don't stop the attack on the zen people when we look at the history of israel we can understand the only state who refused to obey the international laws and they will often break the agreements and rapprochement between palestine and uh, israel there are a huge list of international law violation from uh, israel israel has violated about 27 resolution from the united nations security council like uh, uh, a few example a resolution like 25 uh, 54 111 233 233 236 and exactly a lot of violations from international law so it has been going back and at the same israel they uh, blame the palestinian people that they the palestinian people are not keeping with the agreements with the with the israel the issue did not start from the uh, hamas attack actually the issue started from the uh, the very establishment of palestine when you look at the history of palestine we can find two uh, terminologies one is nakba another one is naqsa the nakba which means catastrophe refers to the mass displacement and disposition of palestinians during 1984 in the arab israel war before nakba palestine was multi ethnic and multi cultural society foundation of events of nakba took place during the shortly after the 1948 palestinian war including 78% of mandatory palestinian being declared as israel the expression and fights of 7 lakhs palestinians and related depopulation and destruction of 500 palestinian villages by zionist militias according to the data of palestinianremember.com israel controlled 774 towns and villages during the nakba in 1948 and they destroyed 531 palestinian towns and villages israeli forces atrocities also include more than 70 massacres and genocides against palestinian killing 4 uh, 5000 15000 palestinians during this nakba before this 1947 and 1949 at least 
seven lakh five fifty thousand Palestinians from one point nine million population were meant refugees before uh, even be before the establishment of Palestine. The Zionist forces has taken more than 78 percentage of uh, historic Palestine, ethnically cleansed and destroyed 530 villages and towns. From actually the, the history started from 1882. The thousands of Eastern European and Russian Jews began settling in Palestine. This is known as Ahalia. Ahalia means the uh, Jewish migration to the Palestine. The, all these Jewish migration started because of the Zionist propaganda. Uh, the Zionist propaganda was started by Theodor Herzl, who was the founder of uh, political Zionism in uh, 18, uh, 1896. When he wrote a book, The Jewish State, he said that in that book, the remedy to the centuries of old anti-Semitic sentiments and attacks in Europe was the creation of Jewish state. At first, when they organized the International Conference for Zionism, they declared that uh, the first place for the homeland for Jewish was not Palestine. Some scholars, they consider Argentina or Madagascar or some European place, or in some African place too, some Latin American or Africa or some European place. They consider this place even before considering Palestine. But these Zionist leaders, especially Theodor Herzl, he insisted that we should be making a national home for Palestine in Palestine for Jewish land. For that, uh, he twice met Sultan Abdul Hamid II, the, the Caliph of Ottoman Caliphate. But Sultan Abdul Hamid II, he totally refused that. He said, the Palestine is the work of property for Muslims. We don't give that money, we that land to anybody. But at the same time, we must understand, at the same time, the Jews were staying there. And Christians and Muslims, most, most uh, predominantly Muslim, uh, there at the same time, Jews also are uh, staying there. And after that, you know, uh, some scholars say even the, the, the collapse of uh, Ottoman Empire, there is a reason for emergence of Zionism. Zionist people also uh, had some hand for the collapse of Ottoman Empire. After this dis uh, dissolution of Ottoman Empire, the British occupied Palestine as a part of secret cycle paper agreement in 1916 between France and Britain to divide up the Middle East for imperial interests. In 1917, as uh, Dr. Abdul Hamans said here, in 1917, the British mandate started, before the British mandate started, the Lord Balfour, he declared uh, that the British government will give a national home for Jewish people in Palestine. That was the direct uh, recorded document for uh, all the Jewish process later on. Then this pledge, actually the, the, the pledge of uh, Lord Balfour was to the Haim Weizmann, the British based Russian Zionist leader and the scholar whose contribution to the British war effort during the World War I made him well connected to the upper echelons of British government. Weizmann lobbied hard for more than two years British uh, former Prime Minister David Lloyd George and former Foreign Minister Arthur Balfour to publicly commit Britain to building a homeland for the Jews in Palestine. By giving their support to Zionist supports in Palestine, the British hoped they could show up support among the significant Jewish population in US and Russia for the Allied effort during World War I. They also believed that Balfour declaration would secure their control over Palestinians after the war. From 1919 onwards, Zionist migration to Palestine, facilitated by the British, increased dramatically. Weizmann, who later became Israel's first president, was raising his dream of making Palestine as Jewish as England is English. Between 1922 and 1935, the Jewish population rose from 9% to, to nearly 27% of the total population of Palestine. 
displacing tens of thousands of Palestinian tenants from their lands as Zion should roll land from absentee landlords and uh, evacuating the, the real owner from the lands. Leading Arab Palestinian intellectuals openly warned against the motives of Zionist movements in the press as early as 1908, with the Nazi seizure of power in Germany between 1932-33 to 1936, 30,000 to 60,000 European Jews arrived in the shore of Palestine. In 1936, the Palestinian people, they also started uh, the resistance against Zionist atrocity and the British imperialism, especially led by Sheikh Zuddin al-Qassam, whose the name you may be uh, familiar with because Hamas has their army wing, they are known as Brigade of uh, Zuddin al-Qassam. He started his revolution, his resistance against uh, uh, Israel, uh, Israeli militants groups and the British imperialism. And at the same time, the Arab revolt also happened in the Arab, uh, another Arabian regions. But, but in 1939, this Israeli militia and Zionist movement, and with the help of British imperialism, they destroyed 2,000 Palestinian homes in 1939, put 9,000 Palestinian concentration camps and subject to them violent interrogations, including torture, and deported 200 Palestinian nationalist leaders too. At least 10% of Palestinian male population had been killed, uh, or wanted, or exiled, or imprisoned by the end of this Arab revolt. The British government worried, you know, the, the helper, the British government, who has been the helper for the Zionist movement, they are somehow, they also become worried, so worried. And they worried about the eruption of violence between the Palestinians and Zionists. Trying to curtail the control that prevent at several points immigration of European Jews, Zionist lobbies London overturned their efforts. In 1944, we must remember that date, in 1944, several Zionist armed groups, they declared war on Britain. In 1944, they declared war on Britain for trying to put limits on Jewish immigration to Palestine at a time when Jews were fleeing from the Holocaust. The Zionist paramilitary organizations launched a number of attacks against the British and they have attacked the King David Hotel bombing in 1946 where British administrative headquarters were housed and they have killed 91 people, 91 diplomats, administrators, especially British officials at that moment. In 1947, the British government announced it would be handing to the, over the disaster it had created in Palestine to the UNO and ending its colonial project there. They want to uh, save themselves from the, this colonialism, these atrocities. On November 29th, 1947, the UN adopted Resolution 181, recommending the partition of Palestine into Jewish and Arab states. At the time, the Jewish in Palestine constituted under one third of population and owned less than 6% of the total land area. Under the UN partition plan, they were allocated, these people, they have less land there, but under the UN uh, partition plan, they were allocated 55% of land. And encompassing many of main cities with the Palestinian Arab majorities and importantly coastline from Haifa to Jaffa. The Arab state would be deprived of key agricultural lands and seaports which led the Palestinians to reject the proposal later. Shortly following UN resolution in 18, uh, 181, then the war broke out between Palestinian Arabs and Zionist armed groups, who unlike the Palestinians have gained extensive military training and arms from the British in the World War II. Zionist paramilitary groups launched a vicious process of ethnic cleansing in the form of large-scale attacks aimed at the mass expression of Palestinians from their towns and villages to build Jewish states, which culminated in the Nakba, which I mentioned before. The 
British occupation authorities has announced that they would be ending their mandate, British mandate, in Palestine on the eve of May 15, 1948. Eight hours earlier, David Ben Ben Gurion, who became the first uh, Israel's Prime Minister, announced what they want to do called the Declaration of Independence in Tel Aviv. The British mandate ended at midnight, and May 15, the Israeli state came into being. The, the Israeli state was established. And after just, just after that, in the half of 1949, at least 7,550,000 Palestinians in total were forcefully expelled after the establishment of Israel and were fled outside their homeland. Zionist forces have committed about 222 atrocities, massacres, genocides against Palestinians by 1949 including massacres, attacks on, such as bombings of homes, looting, and destruction of property and all the entire villages. Establishment of Israel, the state extended its systematic ethnic cleansing through armistice agreements, through the, uh, the agreements between Egypt, Jordan, Syria, and Lebanon in 1949, but they did not consider these agreements as, they, as these are people. They didn't care about that agreement. They started to occupy these uh, Arab state places too. The newly founded Israeli army committed a number of additional massacres after 1949. A number of additional massacres and campaigns forced displacement after this, uh, this time. For example, in 1950, remaining 2,500 Palestinian residents of the city Majidal were forced into the Gaza Strait. About 2,000 inhabitants of Bir Sadr were expelled to the West Bank, and some 2,000 residents of two northern villages were driven into the Syria. So uh, this is the one example of uh, Israeli atrocities against Palestinians. And in the by the midst of 1950s, the Palestinian population inside Israel had become about 1,95,000. And between 1948 uh, and the mid of 1950s, some uh, 30,000 or 15 percent of the population were expelled outside the borders of the new state, according to the Badal Refugee Rights Group. And during, you know, after this, there have been a series of wars between Arab states and Israel. Uh, like 1949, 1940, 1949, 1956, 1967, 1973. All these wars, especially the, during the wars of uh, in 1967, uh, there is another name emerged as Nakasa. Nakasa means setback, setback for Arabs. Israel occupied the remaining Palestinian territories of East Jerusalem, the West Bank, the Gaza Strip, and continues to occupy until today. That's how Hamas, they have issued a new Hamas charter in uh, 2017. They said, we are ready to agree uh, the nine, before 1967 borders. But still, Israel is not ready with that. Hamas is ready to uh, for the peace making process, but Israel is not ready for that. And that issue started from 1967 war. And uh, this Naksa led to the displacement of, uh, this Naksa means uh, the incidents that happened in 1967. This Naksa led to the displacement of some 4 lakh 30,000 Palestinians, half of which originated from the areas occupied in 1498 and were the choice refugees. As in the Nakaba, Israeli forces used military tactics that violated basic international rights, international rights law, such as attacks on civilian and expression. Most refugees fled into neighboring Jordan, with others going to Egypt and Syria, some other states too. So that is the uh, real situation now. And after all these wars, in 1987, Palestinian people start the first intifada. First intifada, the scholars, especially Palestinian scholars, say, why the first intifada started in 1987? 
because all Arab states, most of them, they have uh, came into agreement with Israel. They have uh, started to uh, consider that uh, the Israelis are their state. They forget their war, their disagreement with Israel. But the, and at the same time, Palestinians felt that all Arab states, Muslim Arab states, all, the, all of them, they forget the, real, the very existence of Palestinian people. That's how the Palestinian people start first intifada. There is a first intifada in 1987. At the, at the very time, Hamas was established by the Ikhwani uh, leaders of Palestine, Sheikh Ahmad Yasin, Abdulaziz Rendisi, Yahya Ayash, uh, and, and some other scholars too. And they led the Palestinian resistance after. At the same time, there are some other uh, agreements between uh, Egypt and Israel that, that was known as Camp David agreements. Then Egypt also withdrew from the, the field, the confrontational field. Then in 1992, 1993, Yasser Arafat, with the leadership of Fatah and PLO, he also came into the another agreement that is known as Oslo Accords in 1993 and 1995, second Oslo Accords. Because of that, uh, Yasser Arafat also uh, left his arms, the, his resistance. And then there is only one power, the military power left there, that was Hamas. And with the help of another Islamic movement, al harakat al-Islami, al-Jihad al-Islami, Islamic Jihad, that is left in Gaza region. But at the same time, Palestinian people, sometimes they thought about themselves. They want some kind of democratic process in Palestine, that they left to presence. And they thought that there, there must be an uh, electoral process. Then that happened in 2006. In that election, Hamas got the majority, especially 44 uh, percentage of the population. They uh, recognized Hamas as their ruling party. But with the help of uh, Israel and America, they interfered into the Palestinian issue, and the conflict happened between Fatah and Hamas. Uh, Fatah and Hamas. Then Hamas secured the Gaza region under their leadership. Then Fatah secured West Bank under their leadership. That was the issue. That's that's how Gaza is under the Hamas now. So after this election, Israel did not like the democracy. The, as Sir said, the, the Israel themselves argue that we are the only democratic country in the whole West Asian and North African region. But that is the issue. They did not like the democracy for others, for themselves too. They destroyed the relation of Hamas and Fatah at that time. Now uh, they are in different entities. They have they are ruling West Bank and Gaza at the same time. And uh, there is another uh, intifada, second intifada that happened in 2000, 2000, when the, then the Prime Minister of Israel, Ariel Sharon, with his some militants, uh, the military, they attacked, they forcefully came into the Masjid al region, the people revolted against that, that was the starting point of second intifada. Then uh, now, uh, what is happening now, we are seeing, we are witnessing all these uh, atrocities against like the Palestinian uh, resistance, Palestinian people. So we hope, as I said before, without freedom, there is no peace. And then without peace, there is no freedom. I can ruin my words. Thank you.